Her sun warming smiles, her flowers, her thoughts and rhyme, her past woven in darkness and shine, her future which was mine. She gave me all she had, like that tree shedding its blossoms before they turned weary in time. The gory locks of the mountain god was spread across the blanket of dim stars in the fading night. You could hear him dancing to the rhythm of the madal and machunga echoing in the hills. His eyes were wine red, his lips half parted in ecstasy. The pines and conifers tips swayed to the rhythm of the dumbful beats. If you were new to this world of the mountain kingdom, you would wake up to the sound of the madal beats suddenly in those wee hours. You would find then that the shades of thinning night, weaving shadows of shameful light and delight. But the final blast of shivalite Cracking through the misty mirror, all would be gone. The music, the gory lux of the mountain god in his dance, the color chakra's uncanny eyes opening in a wide grin, which seemed to say, Oh, there you are, I have caught you in the act. The maiden yielding to the embrace of a lover in rapturous desire. Her eyes half cast in shame and uncontrollable longing, his arms lustily clasping to his breast the loveliness in her prime. All, all would vanish into thin air. A shaft of light greeted Devi the moment she opened her eyes. She wanted to hold on to the remnants of her dream fondly. The dancing rhythm, the music of the beats, the festival sarangi still rang in her ears. There were streaks of lightning against the bluish-black backdrop 
the thundering steps raked up a cloud of dust right before the sky was splashed with blood with her feet bleeding. The, the powerful, powerful figure of the, the feminine masculine, she was the father, he was the mother, the single parent of the brother and sister. Yet it was time to get up. It was time to wake up to the world of light crackling with the carousing birds. A world bellowing a cock a doodle do mobile alarm from somewhere. It was time indeed to wake up to the clanging pots and pans, the moving trucks on the road and the sound of the child wailing next door. Mind is an innocuous place to hold all time. You could any time go back to your past, live in your memory, catch its flavors, its smells and sounds. Mind could create the whole story in half light and shade. It could glean the truth from the crust of life. Mind could shuffle the past with the present so that you're in a continuum of truth which is never acknowledged in real life. So even when Devi rushed to her office, a part of her mind lived elsewhere in time. It has always been a double living or a multiple living of lives and selves within her. The car glided down the hill road. The driver's fingers lightly tapped on the steering to the music on his stereo. Losar was on. The folk song gaily echoed the refrains of the festive season. Then the recorder belted out a different mood, a familiar tune, very familiar. Devi strained her mind to listen carefully. immersed playing it on his sharod while Devi waited at the door. His eyes were closed and he was lost to the world around him. Devi did not wish the rippling music which had charmed her soul to be stopped abruptly by her presence. So she stood close to the door allowing herself to soak in the notes which cascaded from him like an overflowing spring of sweetness and pain. It could never be the same again. She had betrayed him the day she chose to wear that red Banarasi sari and decked in flowers of someone else's love had left for a new destination. Even if she came back again and again, it was to a point of no return. There were twins by birth and kindred soul. It was she who had severed that sacred tie and gone away. It was time to get down, Devi, had reached the stop. She hurried down the stony steps leading to her office down the mountainside.
It was dark, very dark, down the temple caves. If she did not go deep down to the fire which was burning, her trip would have no meaning at all. The silence had eyes to see her, guide her, hold her by a hand to lead her there. She had seen in the network of glow and gloom the sacred blood, water, flower offerings and the presence. The rhythm of the silent music had struck her dumb with recognition. The dancing figure of the feminine Nataraja right up there engraved on the pillar of the temple had come to life in the midst of the rocky enclosure. The flame of the huge oil lamp licked up the dark shades uncannily with the silent beat of the steps. Her feet bled as she danced. Her eyes were full of fire. Her wavy locks were flowing everywhere and her lips were half parted in a tender smile holding the secret of the sacred alchemy of love and desire. Bhima Kali Jaya Ma Ambe Jai Jag Janani Jai Jag Dambe Mridang Gadvani Suni Prasanna Ambe Thaka 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 There were days when she bent over the stove, the wax burling with the paint, the cloth stretched before her as she dabbled the hot wax paint onto it over the sketched figures. The colors blended and cracked to leave an imprint of their own on the cloth later. Young Devi, and he would sit close to her, sweating profusely in that sweltering heat of the fire and smoke with the knees drawn close to the chin, their eyes burning in discomfiture and awe. A faded white swans in flight against the azure sky in cracked batik print still hung on the wall of Ma's bedroom. The faded print did not allow for a faded memory she could even now recall clearly the shine in her eyes and feel the same joy as she had on that day so far back in time. The swans were such a beauty. She's losing her mind, he told her over the phone. We may have to think of shifting her to a care home. A tired, exasperated voice. She, who has given her life into her life, light to light her happiness, has no claim to her present. Devi sat down on the stony steps to get back her breath. The sky, by that time, had turned baby pink with the last rays of the setting sun in infinite tenderness and pain. My easel has cracked, you see? There had been tears in her eyes. The girl, 
who did her bed had crushed it in a hurry to get her chores done. But I know you have no time, she had mumbled apologetically. By this time, the day had shut her eyes in a sigh of gentle sleep. The stars were slowly creeping out of the bluish-red plumy blanket of the sky. Devi had prayed in those deep, dark caves to the spirit in shame and tears to take her away before they sent her away from home before the final betrayal. She had prayed hard till her head hurt, till blood streamed down her eyes to meet the sacred blood of the dancing feet. The night bird, which sometimes haunted the darkness with her enchanting rhyme, was back again tonight. It sang till its throat would burst. Devi's eyes searched in the darkness to sight the bird, perched maybe on the parapet of her window or on the terrace. The dark shadows slowly etched out the eyes sparkling with infinite tenderness. The demented bird's piercing refrain formed the syllables. I have waited long till I lost my mind. It was a night train that Devi would catch. Another couple of hours, but it seemed so long that she would be home. The Sheen Nataraja was dancing again. The dance of love, her hairs flowing her eyes soft wine red with weeping. She longed to embrace the dawn and melt into shivalite. Thank you.